right, I need to work something out. This whole skincare and self-care thing is really throwing me for a loop. Everywhere I look, there's a whole new skincare and self-care regimen, and some of them are really complicated. This is the first step in my skincare regimen. Apply this right underneath the eye. Sodium hyaluronate plus lotus. Honestly, my face feels so tight right now. This routine might rival uh, Patrick Bateman's in American Psycho. It's that like thorough. Don't get me wrong, I love any excuse to look inward, but I'm literally stopping at my epidermis. On one hand, I know I shouldn't care about upholding unrealistic standards of beauty, but there's something so soothing about the illusion of control I have when I put on a face mask. I spend my entire paycheck on serums and solutions preparing my skin for the future. But if I'm so concerned about aging, shouldn't I be putting that money into retirement? I'm pretty sure I'm being exploited by the beauty industry, but I kind of like it. And I can't really talk about this with a lot of people because beauty is such a hot button topic. When one journalist wrote that skincare was a con, the internet exploded with think piece after think piece after think piece, dissecting whether it was exploitation or empowerment. The debate over skincare is so contentious that when I asked a bunch of beauty influencers for some truth serum, I had to protect their identity with sheet masks. Did they think that this was all BS or was it actually helping? Skincare is both a scam and a blessing. It's all a ploy. It's all a big scheme. Why are we judging women for how they spend their time and money? When we put our intention behind the like wellness whole part, we're all okay with it. But when we put it behind the vanity part, that's when we shame it. The crazy thing is that skincare actually works. It could be totally psychological, but it does work. Skincare as self-care is extremely political simply because they co-opted the Black Power Movement and put a freaking price tag on it. The term self-care dates back to the Black lesbian feminist poet Audre Lorde, who wrote, quote, Caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. The concept of self-care has political undertones because Lord was referencing the work that women of color do to survive in a patriarchal, racist, and capitalist society. You care for yourself so you can support your family and your community. But fast forward to today, Google searches for the word self-care reached a five-year high after the election. But what are we really talking about when we say skincare is self-care? I asked Gia Tolentino. She's a staff writer at The New Yorker, and she wrote this viral article about skincare as self-care. So why do you think skincare is such a hot button topic? For women, the body is a locus of control where so much else about women's lives are uncontrollable. And that does not always manifest in helpful ways and arguably never does. The pressure upon women to look as good as possible and look better all the time has never been more strenuous at the same time that it's never been more taboo to talk about it in those terms. And women have always been attacked for being superficial mm -hmm. when in actuality, I mean, looks are like, you know, attractive people make more money at work. Like it's, it's a real tangible benefit, you know, but it's, that's an ugly thing to talk about. Is skincare political? Our choices are political, right? Mm -hmm. The importance that's placed on beauty is informed by a long history of women being seen as decorative objects. You know, like women's sexual value, perceived sexual value or their appearance being perceived as the most important thing about them. And that is political, you know? And you know, everything we do exists within power structures that are worth analyzing, I guess. Yeah. You know, Audre Lorde, when she was struggling with cancer, you know, it's like about a, a black lesbian woman you know, being within a body that the world doesn't want to see, that the world doesn't want to make space for, that the world doesn't want to prioritize, choosing to take care of that body is a deeply political act. And it has sort of trickled down ideologically to like face mask articles about, you know, like ladies, like we all know we need to like take a little time for self care this weekend, you know? Right, right. <laughs> it's almost, it's so close to a really important idea. Why do you think skincare is so contentious? Part of it is an anxiety around there are so few controllable things about life as a woman mm -hmm. in America right now, and like maybe that's part of it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, it's a way of women working out now, what do we expect of ourselves? Who is dictating that? Mm -hmm. Like how do we want to approach life as a woman now that we might be getting to set our own terms? It's more controllable than a lot of other problems. Mm -hmm. 
In talking to Gia, I realized that skincare and self-care isn't just about adhering to or avoiding beauty standards. It's about economic anxiety, it's about women's pleasure, and it's about the radical act of taking time for ourselves. And looking better as a result probably doesn't hurt, but the point is it's complicated. And arguing how women spend their paycheck and their time isn't going to liberate anyone. Oh my God, exactly, I feel so seen. But I'm also not about to age like some amateur. That is a great name for a serum, don't age like an amateur. I'm gonna trademark that shit.